Welcome back to another microbit tutorial where we're going to take a look at another type of output device known as our buzzer. A buzzer is a simple device that can generate basic beeps or tones when current is passing through it. For today's program, we're going to go ahead and create a continuous loop using a forever loop, and we're going to use three conditional statements in order to play a series of tones. So let's go ahead and take a look at our flow chart and what our program is going to actually do. We're going to go ahead and program this that if the A, B button is pressed, we're going to go ahead and play a tone of a high B for one beat. If the A button is pressed, we're going to go ahead and play a tone of a low C for one beat. And then if the B button is pressed, we're going to go ahead and play a middle F sharp for one beat. What you will notice based on our flowchart is that we do not have an else statement in our program. Once those buttons are released, that tone will stop playing, so we don't need anything to basically shut them off. So let's go ahead and take a look at our program in Microsoft Make Code. So now that we're in Make Code, we're going to go ahead and start off with our forever loop. The next thing we need to do is to bring in our conditional blocks or those logic blocks. So we're going to go ahead and bring in our if else statement. Now we already know that we don't need the else statement, but we do need to click on that plus sign two additional times to add the else ifs. Now once those else ifs are added, we can go ahead and hit that little minus button and get rid of our else statement. So now we have a continuous loop that has three conditions that can be met within our program. Now our first condition, we're going to go ahead and use the AB button press. Now it is important that we place this in the if statement and not in the else ifs. It can cause conflicts if we move it down to one of those second and third conditions. So we're going to go into our input and we're going to find that button A is pressed. And we're going to go ahead and right click and duplicate on that so that we have a total of three blocks. Once we have those three blocks, we can switch them from A to an AB. We have an A already, and we'll switch that third one to a B. Now we're going to go ahead and plug those into our conditions. So we have if AB is pressed, our second one will add our A button, and then the third one, we're going to go ahead and add the B button is pressed. Now, when we take a look at that flow chart, the first thing we want to do is play a tone. You're going to find your tones under the music drawer. We're going to go ahead and grab that play tone, and we're going to go ahead and drop that into our program. Now, just like our inputs of the A, A, B, and B button, we're going to need to right click and duplicate this two additional times. Now that we have our tone blocks, we can go ahead and place them in the correct conditions. So based on our flow chart, if the A, B button is pressed, we want to go ahead and play a high B for one beat. So we're going to go ahead and drop that play tone middle C in there. And we're going to click on middle C. And what you're going to want to do is slide over till you find that high B for one beat. Once you find that high B, go ahead and click on it. And then from there, we can add it in. So now you'll notice we have a play tone of high B for one beat. If the A button is pressed, we want to go ahead and play a low C. So drop that block in, click, and you're going to go and find your low C. And for the last one, we're going to drop that tone block in. And now we're going to find an F sharp, a middle F sharp. So we're going to go up to the black keys, find the middle F sharp, and now you have your program. So based on our microbit or our emulator, if we go ahead and press the A, B button, we should get a tone of a high B. If we press the A button, we're going to get a low C. And again, if we press the B button, we should get a middle F sharp. So there you have your tone blocks being played by using your inputs. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what that's going to actually look like on the actual microbit. One of the things you will notice that when we look at our micro bit is that we are connecting to our ground and to pin zero. Our play tone blocks are not identifying a specific pin. Therefore, that tone must play through pin zero unless we identify a different pin. So on our micro bit, we can go ahead and take a look at how we have this set up. You'll notice that we're going off of pin zero in ground and that the green wire which is connected to ground is also going to the negative on our buzzer. Our yellow lead is going from the positive to pin zero. So if we test our micro bit and hit the A, B button together, you'll get that tone, again the A button, and then our B button. 
So there you have how you can go ahead and use your buzzer to program in Microsoft MakeCode.